Okay, I got 9.30 on my clock here, so I am going to call the meeting of the uh, Human Services Committee to order. Karen, please call the roll. Chair Swarzy? Here. Member Childress? Yes. Member Garcia? Here. Member Desart? Here. Member Glassy? Here. Member LaPlante? Here. Very good. Do you have any public comments? No public comments. Okay. With regards to my remarks, I just want to let this committee know, and, and our guests as well, that we will be discussing uh, doing uh, discussing the small human services grant under old business. We have some I have some updates to give you, and I know there's some other uh, other members who would like to speak on that. So that will be under old business. I will move to uh, approve item twenty or take a motion to approve item twenty three three zero six six the minutes of the human services committee from September fifth twenty twenty three. And a motion and the second. Who was the motion? You made the motion. You oh. made. <laughs> I will take a motion in a second. How's that? Yeah, I'll motion. Second. Okay, thank you very much. Whatever. Any questions or comments? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you very much. I will take a motion to approve item HSP 6823, approval of a contract purchase order issued to Haggerty Ford to furnish and deliver one second. 2022 Ford Transit Connect van to the weatherization program for a contract total amount of $43,230. We have a motion and a second. Questions or comments? Yes. Was this in the budget for 2023 already? May, I know Mary is uh, online here on Zoom. It's well, it's in the weatherization budget. So the um, we got additional funding through the um, bipartisan infrastructure law. So there was an additional uh, grant to the weatherization program. So that so it was budgeted into that. We had to hire extra staff, which means we need an additional vehicle. Excellent. Thank you, Mary. Thank you. Any other questions? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. I'll take a motion to approve item HST 6923, so awarding much. resolution okay. issued to Benevade Inc. doing business as a neighborly software to provide a grants management software system for the emergency rental assistance program for the period October 1st, 2023 through June 30th, 2027, in the amount of $134,000. We have a motion to second questions or comments. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. I'll take a motion to approve item FIR 218-23, acceptance and appropriation of the Aging Case Coordination Unit Fund Plan Year 24. Mm -hmm. Second. In the amount of $6,958,254. We have a motion and a second. Questions or comments? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. I'll take a motion to approve item FIR 219-23, acceptance and appropriation of the Illinois Department of Human Services Rapid Rehousing Program grant for plan year 24 intergovernmental agreement in the amount of $82,920. Second. 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 Questions or comments? Yes. What does it mean? Mary, what does it mean exactly for rapid rehousing? Remember that one night I called you a year or so ago that, that there was a homeless man and I asked if we had any like hotel vouchers that we could get him now. I mean, what is this program? Could you explain it, please? Sure. Well, there's um, different types of rapid rehousing depending on the funding source. So I'd have to dive into the specific de details of this, but it's for um, individuals who are currently unhoused. So they could be doubled up. They could be um, in, if, you know, the, being, evic being evicted or they could be uh, uh, currently unsheltered. And so um, rapid rehousing is to assist individuals into getting into housing. And then typically um, there's a couple of months rent assistance that comes along with it. Like all of our programs, there's eligibility requirements in terms of income. Very often rapid rehousing requires that the individual has uh, demonstrated ability to, to pay future rent. Um, and so that can be a that can be a hurdle sometimes. Um, I can certainly look uh, in more detail of specifically this type of rapid rehousing um, because typically <clears throat> um, grant programs have different eligibility for who who can access these funds. But what would what would happen is an individual would call two one one or INR. They would get um, screened. We do a pre screening for housing assistance. Then it would be passed on to our housing supports unit. And the housing supports unit would then work with that individual to, to identify if they're eligible for this program. You know, and Mary, how is this different from what the DuPage Housing Authority does? The DuPage Housing Authority, because we we have quite an extensive wait list right now. Well, this is all, this would only provide a couple of months of rent assistance, typically, as opposed to what the housing authority 
the Housing Choice Voucher uh, Program offers long-term assistance. So um, an individual, as long as they remain eligible for a housing voucher, would continue to receive that housing voucher. The rapid rehousing programs are typically short-term assistance. Okay, thank you for that clarification, short-term. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? On to our new page care center. I'll take a motion to provide item 233072. HSP 0049823 amendment to resolution HSP 4923 so spot on transact okay. LLC for the point of sale system for the DuPage Care Center dining services and other cafes on county campus for the period March 1st 23 through February 28 26 to increase encumbrance in the amount of $54,500 a 114.22% increase we have a motion to second question for comments all in favor say aye aye, aye. opposed Thank you very much. Uh, residency waivers, I don't believe we have any. Okay. DuPage Care Center update, Janelle. Uh, it's Anita today. Good morning, everyone. Thank you. Um, I will start off with our COVID update. We are currently in outbreak. This is because we have one resident who tested positive for COVID and we have two staff that tested positive for COVID as a result of which uh, two of our units are in isolation for now. Uh, we are performing serial testing and contact tracing um, as a result of these. We are hoping by the end of the week that we will be out of isolation. So we're currently um, using surgical masks within the facility just as a prevention. Um, the next one is about IDPH. We are expecting surveyors to perform our annual survey at any time. So all our staff are in active preparations for that. Um, and a quick report on the fall festival. It went really well. I do not have final numbers quite yet. We still have some expenses to account for, but once we have that, we will share that with you soon. And that's it. Thank you, Anita. Do we have any questions for Anita? Uh, Member Garcia. I just have a quick question for you, Anita. I was out of town and I have two moms I have to pick up. Uh, we have them. We have them. They're safe and secure here. Thank you, but, but I don't want to come in if you're in outbreak status. How uh, do I no, do you can you can pick. That's not a problem. We're not shut okay. down, but you can pick them up at the front desk. We have them. All right, perfect. Thank you, administration. Anita. Yep. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you. Any other questions? Thank you very much, Anita. I appreciate it. No problem. On to a community services update with Mary Keating. Good morning. Uh, I'm trying to turn my camera on here. Um, so I'm uh, currently attending the National Association for County Community and Economic Development. Um, right now, I'll be running downstairs because the folks from HUD headquarters who come to our conferences are doing their uh, their update. But the good news is we have other DuPage representatives taking good notes, so they're down there. Um, the uh, I think the, probably the biggest thing going on in community services right now is we're very excited uh, in two weeks to have the ribbon cutting for the playground over at the Family Center. So that's going to be uh, the afternoon of October 3rd. Um, so that'll be after uh, our next Human Services Committee. Um, the staff over there are really excited. The families are already using it um, because once the kids see the playground, there's there's no saying no. So um, we're very excited um, and just continue to be grateful for the board for supporting that capital project for us. And I think that's all I have. Thank you. Any other qu or any questions? Yes. Uh, do you, is that it? Uh, 10 a.m. or 10.30, Mary? I think it's know? at 12.30. Until 12.30. October 3rd, right? October 3rd. Any other questions? Thank you. And thank you for always traveling and, and uh, you know, educating yourself on, on <laughs> the great things that, uh, that you do in community services. So thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, on to old business. Before I open up the floor for old business, I, I have a few comments I would like to make uh, and some questions regarding our small human services grant uh, process. So, so currently, the uh, Assistant State's Attorney Connor McCarthy is meeting uh, or is setting up meetings with all the uh, recipients. He needs to go through agreements, get signatures, and 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 just sort of make sure everything's kosher to, uh, to obviously protect ourselves. So I, I know he has, uh, I think, scheduled all but maybe three or four. He's still waiting to get back. 
His goal is to have that done um, by the end of this month or certainly early October. So no money is going to be handed out until he meets with all these people and then gets the agreement signed. With regards to the distribution process, once once uh, you know all the T's are crossed and I's are dotted, we we uh, you know it's nothing set in stone because we just need to make sure that uh, Connor's process is complete. But the tentative thought initially is to uh, um, do it in between our finance and county board on October twenty fourth. Now, with that being said. If you guys recall, Brian Krajewski mentioned uh, at our last county board meeting or finance meeting, the, the possibility of each district doing it in their own district with their potential recipients. So my question to this board uh, is, please give that some thought and check with your seat mates and I would like some feedback on that. So, uh, you know, I, I believe we have some flexibility. You know, it'd be nice that if if three of the districts want to do that, and three of the districts don't. You know, it, you know that may create a little bit of awkward con conflict just because we're still going to have to have something here in the county, and if not everybody wants to do that, so it's, I think it's going to be all or nothing. So. Uh, but if everyone is unanimous or, you know, the majority is, is unanimous that we want to do it in our own districts on whatever given date you guys decide. Uh, I have talked with Joan and she said we can make that happen. We can get the camera people out there and so forth. So, so if you could get back to me, uh, let's say by next Tuesday at the latest on uh, your consensus from your, from your district. Uh, and then lastly, uh, about um, this whole process, I, I've mentioned this a few times. Uh, I've been told today that we have um, money in the budget uh, with this ARPA interest for the next, I can't remember exactly how many years, three or four years to be able to do this. Next two years. I could have sworn Nick said longer than that, but, um, <laughs> but okay. But by coming from finance, at least two more years. And uh, so we will be the finance uh, chair and vice chair, myself and member Garcia, along with staff, will be meeting probably as early as November to start discussing the new pro the process for next year, because we certainly saw some of the problems that we ran into and we will work hard and we can take input from everybody on this committee to be able to, to sort of solve those problems. So just, uh, just to let you know that. So that being said, any other old business? Member Childress, yes. What would that uh, presentation look like? Will they be coming to a central place, all of them at one central place? If you if you decide to do it in your own district, you and your seed mates would need to come up with a location to do this. It could be a, you know, I mean, it, I mean I, technically it could even be here, but if you're going to do that, we might as well do it all. But, <laughs> right. Um, but find a place. So there's going to be some legwork involved. So okay. pick, pick your location and, you know, your goal is to try to get everybody there. And yep. so, yeah. Okay. Any other old business? Yeah. I'm, I'm assuming this is old business. Um, District 5, we weren't able to be here at your last meeting, and we, and we apologize. I actually had a funeral. A family member had passed away. Um, and so we, we weren't able to enjoy the conversation that day with you guys. However, um, we did want to uh, make a modification to uh, distribution for the small grant program. Um, we do have one uh, organization, IPEF, which is approved by the legal counsel um, to be able to get grant funding. Um, and so we would like to increase theirs from $100. We put that as a place mark because we weren't sure. Um, and we would like to include them in this year's distribution. Uh, to 25,000. So they've already been awarded 100. So it would be $24,900. 
Um, and then this is the Indian Prairie Educational Foundation. And we do have $43,355 left in our we do. to allocate. We do have enough money, um, even after the distribution for uh, to IPEF, um, we will still have a balance. <laughs> so we would like to get a motion on that and move that process so forward. Second. Uh, I need, uh, there, there's going to be some discussion, but... Uh, the motion, I believe, has to be from committee members. So, she is. Yes. So, I, and we have a second. Okay, sorry. It's not on the agenda. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. So, we throw the agenda next meeting? So, well, it's old business. Oh, yeah. Oh, did you finally get on finance? Okay, so, so let's, let's have the discussion now. Okay, so, so, um, it, it just has to be approved through this office, yeah, through this committee. So, so with regards to, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna reach out to some of our staff just to see what their comments are. One comment that I have is, and I could be wrong, but I believe they only asked for twenty thousand. Is that correct? We have that. Um, right. Right. Yes. So they only. So so. So I think the discussion would be to raise it to twenty thousand because then there's five thousand dollars that we're giving them that they don't even know. They don't right. Right. So, right. so it's nineteen thousand nine hundred dollars. That's right. Because we we already awarded a hundred. That's right. And so um, I'm going to ask staff for uh, finance staff first if they have any comments about this. Um, Okay. For the Connor, if he wants to comment on it. So, uh, my, my comments were that it's unclear whether the specific uh, expenses are within the county statutory authority. It's a very general program that they developed and put together. I'm happy to talk with them through the, the program. We're already setting up a meeting with them, as I recall. Okay. I don't know off the top of my head which day it is, but I've booked out my next two weeks to meet with everybody. So, okay. Um, I'm what I've been doing with these is I ask them to explain what exactly they want to spend the money on and then tell them, well, if you're going to buy cars for every kid in, in the district, that's obviously not okay. But food is food is okay, that sort of thing. So a, a lot of it's just where you have a general program like this and there's a lack of specifics in the proposal. Ideally, they would have refined their proposal. Our process didn't provide for that. Our timeline didn't provide for that. So now I'm just doing it on the back end. So I, I, it's not like a, a red flag and like completely outside the scope. There's portions of it that are, there's portions of it that may be, and there's portions of it that probably are. So they just need to work the budget. And I and I totally love the fact that he is putting so much effort in this because these small groups really do need this help. Um, and I know that uh, Indian Prairie does have a very high low income uh, uh, student population. We are up to 21.7% this year, um, which translates out to 5,547 students plus currently 128 homeless students. Can you introduce yourself, please? I apologize. My name is uh, Dr. Trudy Ranson. I am the executive director for the Indian Prairie Educational Foundation. Um, and I'd love to talk to Connor at some point. We have a meeting next week. Okay. Um, yes, and I'd be happy to answer any questions you have about our program. Sure, sure, sure. Thank you. I just wanted to interject. Sure. I'm member, not on the uh, committee, Colbert. but I am District 5 member, and I support our Indian Prairie School District. They do have great programs. You have a backpack program for after school, or uh, get back to school, uh, providing free backpacks. Um, and supplies. They have a lot of great programs. So I think we could work something out as long as we get more specific and narrow it down. I think it shouldn't be a problem. And, and I love the fact that this committee makes the final decision. So I want to thank you all for taking this into consideration. Um, and I'm assuming that once, um, you know, we get legal going, okay, that we can just move it forward. Once legal is going, if the IPEF, which has already been approved, and Connor meet, <clears throat> is there a way that IPEF could say, could pad their request up to $25,000? Or is that- The process has already been okay, done, so yes, yes, yes. So they can only get $25,000. No, no, hey, you know what? Don't money the water. If you don't <laughs> ask, you don't get, <laughs> right? Don't get the Remember the plan. Um, so this sounds like a fantastic program, right? So. This is, I'm being completely and utterly Switzerland on the actual recipient. What I would like to discuss is the process. So I'm, 
I have questions because there was definitely in my district, you know, as, as Connor can attest, I spent and Greg, I spent many, many, many hours working and going through this. This was a, as you have addressed, a very complicated process that left the work up to the committee members. There was definitely applicants in my district who were very close. And basically everything that Connor just said about this applicant could be said about half of the ones that came through district four that we said no to because they didn't have the right qualifications at the time and there was deadlines. So I'm just want to make sure that the, the topic of, you know, making sure that this was an equitable application process for all is addressed because we can all go back and say, hey, actually, they just didn't fill it out right. You just need some more information. And so then I wonder if that casts a shadow over some of this application process. Can we discuss that and have someone speak to that? In, in my initial my initial thought, and I have staff here that can tell me that I'm wrong, uh, the, uh, the IPEF was eligible yes. based on legal based on staff. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll just jump in here. Sure. Um, my review on this list was it's unclear whether it's specific or not. If someone had called me and asked me about it, I probably would have said they really should have submitted more detailed application. Now, it's not. I don't get to make the final decision. That's left up all to you guys. You can, if you want to call and reach out and ask what I mean by that, that's fine. My, my review on this, some of you did. And I had, I spent a lot of hours on the phone explaining mm -hmm. my rationale for a lot of this. So uh, ultimately, it's not my decision. The, the board members vote, the board members put it up, the board members do, their tolerance for risk is all different and unique by district. My, my role here was to basically say, is it likely to fall within it? Is it not likely to fall within it? Or do I not have enough information? Some members decided that when I didn't have enough information, they did. Others decided that they didn't. And that's my, rec I can only give a recommendation. Can I just tag to you? Know, what sure. Time? I think that's part of the process going forward. And what we're what uh, Member Schwarzer was talking about come um, November, December, after the initial grant funding, we need to sit down and really have a, provide a lot more guidance for applicants yeah. going forward. And I think that's one of the goals that we've got. Thank you, Lisa. Uh, Member Chamberlain, you had your hand up. Is no, I'm, it, fi I'm fine. Okay, well, Member, thank you. Member Sark. Thank you. Um, IPEF already qualified for a grant. They're already getting a hundred thousand or a hundred dollars, so they already qualified. I think what my seatmates in District Five and I are saying is we have forty-three thousand dollars left on the table, and we want to disperse it to great agencies like the IPEF. So we just want another opportunity to spend money to an organization that already has been vetted. We also have money left on the table. So um, Chair Schwarzy, I would love to hear your response to this to, in answer to the question because we had to also leave money on the table exactly how Connor described because I would call and say can you please explain what this means and he gave you know fantastic um, specific advice and then also really good general advice which is you have lawyers for a reason and you know it is I, I listened to our our legal advisor. Yeah, I mean, and I asked my legal advisor, I asked Connor several questions as well. I don't see this as a competition. So, no, 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 okay, so I'm gonna stop, okay. So, so what I'm not going to do is open the door for uh, those 501c3s who are not, who have not already been approved by this board as of last, as, a, as of our last meeting. So. So I'm not going to do that. We're not going to do that because that just that just creates you know, a mess. Okay. With that being said, I am very cognizant of Member Laplante's concerns, and, and it's and it's solely based on our ASA's comments about there were some some things that he wasn't 100 percent sure about. With that being said, this in particular entity has already been approved by this board by this committee last meeting and so i think the i think we are on the right track to be able to possibly increase their money based on counter meeting with them and every other entity that that was approved so so that's where i stand on this and 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 that's how i would like to see this proceed. so can we go back and then increase um funds for the 
um, uh, applicants that we did approve, but didn't give them maybe the full fund? Can we go back and can everyone go back and do that? Um, spend all the money? The answer to that is, is I'm going to say no to that as well. Now, hopefully, if somebody asked for 20, because I know District 4 didn't spend all their money. Right, right. So if somebody asked for $25,000, I hope that they got it based on, um, you know, the review by the staff and so forth and so on. So, Member Chapel. Yeah, so, okay. Are you done? No, I, I just want to make it clear, just because this could be used for going forward when you're meeting, you know, for, for future, right? Just to just going forward, looking forward, because I tried to, if I received information that said, you know, only part of what they are applying for was um, applicable, was yeah. then I would adjust, uh, we adjusted the amount there, therefore. So there's two different approaches well, here, which is, you and know. I will say, and, and I don't want to speak for District 5, they, they gave $100, but it does. It didn't mean that. Well, I understand that. I'm that just it saying. It didn't mean that IPEF was only eligible. I'm sorry. It just didn't mean that IPEF was only eligible for a hundred dollars. So. Right. I understand that. Uh, Member Chapman. Yeah. So. Yeah. So just I completely understand where Member Leplan is coming from because she had money left in your mm -hmm. district, yeah, right? Definitely. Right. So, but I think that because the committee voted for this. Indian Prairie, whatever meeting it was, and they were approved. And I think that's where they're saying the difference. Yeah, sure, I get but, that. But I totally, and I think we had money too I left. We have money too yeah. left. So, um, but I think the this is, a, is I think this is a specific, a little bit different because they were approved in the other one. And okay. This might be maybe an exception, but I think this is something very good that you bring up that we can talk about going forward yeah. in our meetings. Um, you know, with that, and I'm sorry, I have to go transfer. Okay, thank you, Member Chapman. I'm going to go with Member Garcia and then Member Desart. Yeah, and, and I also agree with Member LaPlante on this. You know, this is the slippery slope here. It really, really is. Um, we've had a lot of discussion. Um, the only the only reason that I, I, there was no one here from District 5 last time to make their case. And I know that there were some issues that people couldn't attend and stuff like that. So, I mean, we had discussion at that meeting that we were going to give them more money. But there was no one here to actually advocate. voice or advocate it for it. So that's the only reason I'm going for this. But I do think this is a really good learning experience yeah, to no take idea. forward so that we can now on make sure that this does not happen in the future. So let's take Member LaPlante's points and what we've heard here today, and we'll take it forward and we'll really make it very clear and really make sure that this is because this has become an onerous task on our staff, which is what we did not want it to be. So, <laughs> so. I have to go. Thank but you, I just Member wanted Cooper. to say one more thing that this is, these funds are based on a need basis on me. Um, and we're looking at equity, equity and equitable, mm -hmm. you know, an equitable outcome. So mm -hmm. the statistics of the homeless, right, in our uh, population in our mm -hmm. district. So it is on a need basis. And that's all I'm going to say. Thank no, you, Member Cooper. Thank, thank you for being here. Uh, member Desire, yes. Member um, Chaplin and Member Garcia, that is exactly the point. The two members from District 5 on this committee um, could not be here due to emergencies two weeks ago. So we weren't mm -hmm. available to chime in on, on, on this need. That's where we're bringing it up now. It may seem late to the party, but we couldn't be here two weeks ago. My other thought is that when you do talk about policy, um, in November or when, whenever you, you and finance redo this, one of the questions that you might want to ask yourselves, and I don't know the answer to this, but because um, if we do, if we are able to give IPEF the extra $19,900, um, District 5 will still have $23,000 that we have not spent. So one of the questions maybe as you're redoing this, this process over the next couple of years is will each district get to add on from their previous year's allocation. For example, yes. um, each district gets $175,000. Will we get to use our $23,000 and moving forward to the next year? Just a question for the press. On my list, yes, thank, thank you. you. And, uh, I'm sorry, Member Glassy, did you have a question? I didn't, thank okay. you. Well, is there a motion or a hands up? Well, and that's my next question. Uh, any other que so any other uh, discussion at the, at the moment? So. What what is my process here? Because this committee is the one that approves this or or doesn't approve it. So because this is under old business, do we have to put this on the agenda for next? We'll put it on finance for next. Okay. That's what was. That had to be approved. My question, though, it has to be approved in this committee. 
Discharge Committee add finance next week. Put it on finance. Is that a better option? I mean, than, consensus. Is that a better yeah. option than bringing it back to this committee in two weeks? So we'll just keep it will let things happen a week faster than we can get them back here. So yeah. Okay. But also we'll have 18 board members um, voting versus I'd like to six. do a consensus vote. Okay. I think that they're all gonna be no. out. I don't think they'll be one. I would just prefer to have it done in committee and get it over with, even just a consensus vote as to what direction. Well, yeah, I don't know. I, I think this like involves the entire board, and yeah, everyone did say. have a, yeah, so we put a we say. Put it uh, so, yeah, hang on a minute. I'm going to give the floor to the member. Go ahead. Thank you so much, Chairman. Um, I would just, my two cents are that this does impact the entire board. Everyone did have a say in this process. Of course, obviously, we are the voting members on this committee, but I do think it would be appropriate for it to be in front of the full finance committee. So everyone can, you know, it can be there and have a vote. That's different to the process that was originally. Yeah. Gus, Remember Gus? She's much younger and prettier too. I don't know. Okay, I'll take it. Um, but I guess it's it's treating them differently in the process. That's the only thing I I know. Now, and again, this is different too. Because I will we say that here. member of ASA McCarthy is. Will be um, let's see our next uh, our next finance meeting is a week from today, but our next HS meeting isn't until the first week of October. He's probably going to be done with this process by then. Not not that he can't continue it, but um, in, in this particular instance, all I would have to do would be change the amount of the grant. That's not a huge lift, and I can always make that change if I need to. So I'm not going to do that. Uh, to sign that agreement until that issue has been hashed out. So I'm assuming that uh, uh, the recipient wouldn't be banging on my door asking for uh, their money. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna take a I'm gonna just take can I take a poll? Or, okay, I'm gonna take a poll. Who would like to put this on the finance agenda? And this is just the members on this board would like to put this on the finance committee agenda. Okay. All right, so I didn't vote, but it was unanimous to put this on the finance agenda committee. So, the finance committee agenda. So, okay. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you. Good discussion. Uh, do we have any new business? Uh, uh, Chair oh, Chairman yeah. Chorsey, um, so, I'm there. sorry. Um, I was notified that the uh, ribbon cutting is at one o'clock, not at Thank 12.30. You. Thank you very much. October 30th. Sorry about that. Uh, take a motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Oh, more.